and hello and welcome to another episode of Divorce TV and we've got an exciting one tonight uh, or today if you're in the States I've got a special guest Robert Aguilar who is a podcaster he does a special podcast for co-parents particularly for dads called the Disney Dads Pod uh, Disney Dads Show podcast and he'll be telling us all about that and how he came to create that and the kind of advice and guidance that he gives we've also got a little bit of teaching I'm doing an extract from the Divorce Masterclass where we will be looking at some of the psychological aspects of divorce the divorce first aid if you like which includes sudden divorce syndrome don't know if you've ever heard of that one and we've got an amazing healing at the end so be ready for that but first of all we've got our divorce news so our divorce celebrity news today begins with a really interesting case actually a new york judge has rejected actress mary kate olsen's bid for an emergency divorce from her husband Pierre Olivier Sarkozy after ruling that it's not an essential matter. So poor old Olsen, she starred in a sitcom Full House alongside her twin sister Ashley, first filed for divorce in April but ran into difficulties with the courts in the state um, because they're obviously operating a limited capacity due to coronavirus. So the 33 year old had asked for an emergency divorce filing to be approved claiming that the 50 year old banker Mr Sarkozy who's the half brother of former French president Nicolas Sarkozy was forcing her out of her home. However unluckily for her the judge determined that the matter was not essential so they can't file anything at this point. So if, if you're in New York, New York at the moment there is no way you're going to file for a divorce you're just going to have to wait till things settle down. Next story coming up is, uh, this is an interesting one as well, the wife of a Russian billionaire, she's bringing a legal action against her own son after her husband failed to pay his £450 million divorce bill. So Tatiana Akhmedova, who's 52, she was granted a 41.5% share of her ex-husband's £1 billion fortune at the High Court in London in 2016. The trouble is that uh, he hasn't actually paid it. Uh, apparently he's not voluntarily offered her any of the £453 million that she's owed. So she's now taking legal action against her eldest son, Tamur, who she claims is heavily involved in her father's affairs. So that's a, a really, really unpleasant case of getting the children involved in the divorce. And finally, uh, a happy story. Good old Bruce Willis and Demi Moore, who uh, always always get the gold star for co-parenting. They've, um, they've been... Um, uh, co-parenting in shutdown in lockdown with their adult children and now they've been joined by Bruce's wife uh, current wife Emma Hemming and their two daughters uh, Mabel eight and Evelyn six and they're all hanging out together in his uh, on this enormous ranch and having a wonderful time dressing up and putting on lots of posts on Instagram but it's a it's a really nice example of um, of how to get on well in co-parenting and Good old Bruce, he always does seem to buck the trend with with uh, celebrities in giving a... Him and Demi have done... I, I just don't know of any others. There's, there's a few others who've done as well as that. But it is great to have some good role models because we do, we do tend to see quite a lot of the negative ones on the, um, on the media. And now I'm going to introduce you to Robert Aguilar Jr. of the Disney Dads Shows podcast. Now, Robert, I'm going to give you the floor now. I'd like you please to tell us all about why did you start this podcast? So, no, where, where's the, where's it all come from? And a little bit about what people will get if they sign up for it. Hi, Susie. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me on the show. Yeah, the Disney Dad Show. It's, it's a podcast that I started here in the U.S. and it's actually available anywhere if you go to my website. Uh, but part of the reason, what you were talking about earlier, there's great examples of fathers like uh, Bruce Willis and and with his wife Demi Moore. There's also Will Smith, um, who has a really good co-parenting relationship uh, with his family and his ex-wife and his kids. And uh, so when you see that, 
and then you experience or also hear stories about like this gentleman who won't pay his his 450 million <laughs> pound uh, support bill. Um, you, you you realize that there's a, a far, far end of that spectrum that people are not um, addressing, and I think more people need to make make aware that there are what we call deadbeat fathers, and uh, they have issues with uh, working on themselves and, and and being good fathers to their kids because they're so angry about what's going on with the divorce that they completely ignore the needs of their child. And so my focus with the podcast is to find ways to bring fathers that are struggling with their own personal demons or struggling with custody issues um, to work on themselves and find ways to get back into the home and uh, not into the home necessarily. That, that doesn't mean they're going to fix the divorce, but to bring their kids in and have a an amicable relationship so that they can talk to their kids, raise their kids instead of being a Disney dad. Now, briefly, Disney dads are um, fathers who have limited custody. And so what they do at that time is they choose to be the fun dad. They, they're the dad who takes them to Disneyland, which is kind of where the, the name uh, originated, but they also buy them things and, and kind of just win their approval with the short time they have them instead of being a parent, instead of helping them with their homework, instead of having them on a schedule and putting them to bed on time and, and offering any sort of discipline. So um, what I try to do is, is locate fathers that are doing that or have fathers that are doing that come to me. Um, sometimes I'm approached by their wives and asked to speak to them as a mediator and uh, find ways to have a father more involved. I mean, women, single moms are amazing. They, they can juggle a hundred things. I can, I see that often, but at the same time, these kids have a father and if they, and if they have a father, they should be interacting with them on a regular basis, learning from them, being mentored by them. So uh, that's, that's kind of the goal of my show. And so um, I appreciate you letting me share that. I, I uh, have been dealing a lot lately with a lot of stuff with uh, coronavirus and alienation. And there's uh, couples who have used, uh, or maybe one side of a couple who has used this as an opportunity to um, not let their child go to the other home. And uh, unless, unless there is a, a a direct threat in regards to uh, exposure, you should really, as a parent, try to stick to your your schedule. Uh, if it's a 50-50, have it be 50-50. If the husband's every other weekend, then have you know have them still utilize that because they they aren't going to be exposed to anything unless the other house is a party house and there's a lot going on. And, and if the, and if there is a case of exposure or there's some danger or the child is already showing symptoms, then yes, communicate. Uh, with your spouse and and work out something where they're in one of the homes that's more comfortable where they can quarantine themselves, but allow constant communication. They can video chat, they could Skype, they could uh, uh, FaceTime, uh, talk on the phone, whatever they need to do, but still try to maintain that if if this is the case where they, they have to be locked up. But But remember that if you do use this as an opportunity to not show or allow your children to see your spouse, then you are committing a crime in, in essence. You're alienating the child and you're also damaging the child in many ways. And so that's something I wanted to speak about today and make sure that parents who are watching this and who are experiencing something like that, even if you're the victim, if you're the parent that your spouse is keeping your child away, uh, speak up and, and claim your children. <laughs> So. That's very sound advice, very sound advice. And if it's, that's um, also give us a little advice for, particularly for dads, because when we were talking uh, earlier this week, you said some really interesting things about how how sometimes dads sab sabotage things for themselves. And I know that when I've talked with Families Need Fathers, who are an amazing charity here, that they that often they've noticed that can happen too. So that would be really valuable to, to share that. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens on both sides, but men, uh, fathers tend to have a, a tendency to sabotage themselves because of uh, either some sort of egotistical aspect or they're struggling with some sort of substance abuse or anger issues. And so um, what it does is it, it these fathers who want to have custody and they want to be part of their kids' lives keep doing things that prevent them from being there. And they really remove custody for some reason or uh, reduce their custody because they're struggling with personal demons they, they have to they don't or they don't have a job and they're dealing with money issues and they constantly are having trouble paying child support which is another issue because if you don't pay your child support uh, you're gonna go to jail 
but some men won't pay child support because they feel like punishing the mom is the right thing to do in, in these situations. And you're, you're actually punishing your child because they, there are things they need and the mom's going to be struggling, uh, even if it's just to keep the, the, bill, the bills paid and the heat on and the water running. You, got, you know, pay your child support because you're helping your child, you're not helping your wife directly, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and, and just also be present for your child. Uh, when, when you have visitation or you're allowed to see them or they have an event, show up, be there. Um, don't, don't use it as an opportunity to say, hey, I'm not going to be in the same room as my wife. Uh, it's, it's not about your wife at that point. And, and that brings me to the last thing is the relationship between you and your spouse, your wife is very important. You need to treat her with respect and set an example for your child as well because first of all treating them with respect is going to open up a lot of doors for you in regards to how much access you're going to have to your child and and how that's going to work and second of all uh, you're setting an example that your child's going to see for their own marriage uh, in the future and they're also go it's also going to shape their opinion of you um, as they grow older as well because trust me I have a teenage daughter now and, and opinions uh, <laughs> Are, are solidified right around that time uh, as to uh, how embarrassing dad is at this point. So, <laughs> so you're, so be an example. That's very sound advice. Thank you. And uh, I've got a little QR code coming up a bit later on in the resources section of the show. Well, if someone puts their phone to that, where will that take them? What will happen? So that'll take them to my website, the Disney dad show.com, which also accesses, there's several links on there to my blog, um, my social media and to the podcast. So, uh, you can go there to get access to everything, but if you'd also like to go directly to social media, I'm on Instagram at official Disney dad. Um, also on Facebook at official Disney dad and on Twitter at the Dis or Disney dad show. No, the, Disney dad show but yeah please if, and if you have questions about uh, a situation going on in your marriage uh, or your divorce and with with child custody uh, I'd love to talk to you and then maybe we can have you on my show as well and and try to help you out because it is for the kids thank you so much thank you thanks Susan it's great to have you on the show and uh, I'll get you back soon I'm sure um, and now we are going in to an area where uh, and uh, as we said just by the way I'm going to be giving a, a range of resources later on in the show if you haven't seen it before with QR codes so have your phones at the ready but now we're going into sort of the learning side of the show so here we have an excerpt from the divorce masterclass the divorce discovery voyage and I wanted to just take you through a little excerpt from that and it's about the the divorce first aid part of it and and often as i said with the last week's show we don't take that side seriously so i wanted to give you a few facts and figures which i found really interesting around this so when we experience divorce often we we begin by feeling very divorce um very uh, shocked and in a, and a state of of um of dismay and that always reminds me of the need for arnica i don't know if any of you have used homeopathy before uh, i certainly use quite a lot of aconite when i was uh, going through family separation because that helps you with this with the shock and the other thing i wanted to talk about was some something called it's got a it's a real thing it's called sudden divorce syndrome and there's some very s surprising statistics around that but i wanted to open with a, a lovely quote from elizabeth gilbert and she wrote in Eat, Pray, Love, that the only thing more unthinkable than leaving was staying. The only thing more impossible than staying was leaving. I didn't want to destroy anything or anybody. I just wanted to slip quietly out the back door without causing any fuss or consequences and then not stop running until I reached Greenland. And I think for many people who, especially if you've been the one who's chosen to leave the relationship, uh, that might resonate. But when you do, when it happens, whether it's you choosing it or someone else making it happen despite your wishes, it's, it's a, it can be quite a devastating experience. So I like to think of homeopathic arnica and aconite being arnica for bruising, the bruising. We talked about egos earlier with, with uh, Robert. There's a lot of ego bruising that goes on. Certainly your heart can get quite bruised. But according to the article Sudden Divorce Syndrome by John Sedgwick, one in four men who were divorced in the previous year said they never saw it coming. 
and only 14% of divorced women said they'd experience some unexpected shock in the same way. So why is that? It's funny that the men seem to to see it, not see it coming as often as the women. So he got interested in this and they also created this term called sudden divorce syndrome. But it implies that often that the women throw out the marriage as impulsively as they change shoes. And a man may be shocked by the news that his wife wants out, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she hasn't given him plenty of warning. And it's usually, this is what the study found, was that they just weren't listening. So while it's true that women may file more often than men for divorce, it does not necessarily follow that they want the divorce. They simply have surrendered the hope that the marital relationship can change. And it's only after years of feeling ignored, devalued, invisible and unheard that women finally put the, pull the plug and file for the divorce. Sudden divorce syndrome assumes, assumes a impulsive behaviour on the part of the, of the woman. So, but of course, as we've just said, that's nothing is further from the truth. And um, perhaps a better term would be to call it shocked divorce syndrome, because it certainly is um, a very accurate term for those, uh, and I was certainly one of those, who, who find themselves blind, blindsided by the whole thing. Um, so shock is actually a very key first stage of what you go through and if you are in that space yourself or if you have friends or family or friends at work who are in the early stages it's really important to recognize and remember that the power of that shock state it's because it's like a bereavement um, and it has the same intensity emotionally and psychologically and you mustn't underestimate the impact of that on their mental and physical health and people dealing with divorce and we'll be getting some help with uh, dealing with that kind of shock and suffering later on with our healing with Marion. So Dr. Ned Holstein, MD, he's a Harvard trained public health specialist. He explained that it's a physical toll from divorce brought on by the excess stress. So he noted that the top five causes of human stress are the death of a child, the loss of a spouse, the loss of a home, serious financial woes and losing a relationship with a child. So in a way, four of these five are all involved when someone goes through a divorce. According to a study done by the American Journal of Psychiatry, blood pressure and cholesterol levels rise, great having a live show, and the risk of heart disease and coronary failure increases sharply. Other problems associated with sudden divorce syndrome include diabetes and cirrhosis of the liver, which might in part be because uh, distraught people may turn to unhealthy behaviours like drinking after a breakup. So although divorce is a crisis and a profoundly stressful life event for many people, men and women react to the crisis and the stress differently. Men sometimes kill themselves, but women who often do attempt suicide do not use such lethal weapons and have uh, therefore have a higher survival rate. So divorced men end up with twice as high a risk of suicide as their married counterparts. So why do women seem to cope better? Well, the theory is that women form greater supportive networks, such as meaningful friendships uh, at a very much higher level than perhaps the men often do, and regardless of their marital status. So when their marriage status changes, women still have their friends to, to lean on. So like bereavement, divorce tends to isolate people because other people don't know what to say, they don't know what to do, um, and it's really important that if you, when you're, even though you've been through it yourself, that you come across people who are going through that situation, and you may, you may still be awkward and know not what to say, even though you've been there yourself. And it's so important that you do reach out to people, the same as when there's a bereavement. Um, as David Arquette, who divorced Courtney Cox in 2012, so eloquently stated, people that go through what I went through and people going through divorce, it's really a difficult process. It's heartbreaking and it hurts really bad. It can really mess with your head. It wasn't just a, a voluntary nice thing to do in the state of Aya, it was actually a part 
of the divorce process. Oh, well, it was incredible because first of all, all of the pain and argument and fighting between us two helped also to resolve itself within this process, within this day. We hadn't been married long. Why should I have to pay for her? And why should I do this? And I'm never going to have money again, ever. Of course, that was a load of rubbish. <laughs> and I was very worried about the children because um, my wife at that time, this was 22 years ago, uh, felt that it wasn't important for me as a father to be around the kids and that they would be fine. And I felt different to that. Uh, they were, in fact, my adopted children, because so I wasn't their natural father. However, they still have my name and adoption is adoption, right? Running up to the divorce, of course, there was all the terrible uh, pain, heartache, arguments, frustration. But then the process started to take place where the divorce was registered in the state of Iowa in America, in the United States. And we were informed, uh, my uh, wife at that time and I were informed that as a part of this, it was obligatory, mandatory, to attend uh, a seminar on uh, responsibilities of divorcing parents for their children. In that the, the emphasis was that the children should by, be not harmed or come out badly from the, uh, from the divorce. So the first part of the morning was about practical things. Where are they going to live? Who are they going to live with? Uh, what? And then we were asked to uh, just talk about the terms of our divorce quite openly. You know, who, was it going to be um, equal visitation rights and so on? Everything like that. So we talked about that. And then they encouraged us to talk about uh, finances. And uh, in some cases in the room, you know, some people were very worried. Uh, but um, all this came out into the open, which was very interesting. So, so in the afternoon, we got much more into the psychology of the children and how they see the divorce. And it was made clear to us for the first time, in my understanding, that children blame themselves for the divorce. They helped us to mitigate that so that they gave us skills, they gave us words to talk to our children, to describe to them that it's not their fault, that, and how this happens, why people get divorced, why it happens. And so um, with these skills, with these words that we were given, we were able to then go back to the children as a, a departing couple, a divorcing couple, and explain to them why this has happened, and to give assurances and reassurances on uh, the fact that we're going to be there for them, we still love them, they don't have to be frightened of the future. In the seminar we, we talked about money and equal sharing and responsibility and um, as the father and the husband I kind of, I think that I got out of my selfishness a bit about money well, I got individual therapy, yes. Um, I got a, um, a male counsellor, um, therapist, and uh, <laughs> I laugh at this, I laugh at myself, that um, up until that point, all I was fretting about was what my, um, my wife was demanding and wanting and what her desires were. And then he looked at me and he says, well, what do you want? I said, what? What do I? I never thought of myself. <laughs> that's daft, wasn't it? But actually that, that was the value of therapy for me, is that I thought, oh, wait a minute, I'm a person. What are my needs? We had some very experienced social psychologists in the room and marriage counsellors, and they were saying, you know, they were saying, okay, like we were the children. <laughs> now it's time for you to start behaving. <laughs> I think that it was the, um, the structure and guidance of the seminar upheld both mother and father.
And I think that whether you're a dad or you're a mum, in the um, environment of the seminar, you saw the mothers being upheld, you saw the fathers being upheld, and you saw their role being supported and reinforced. And that was quite good. You can't make your divorcing other partner go along to anything. You just got to persuade them. If they do go along, it's going to be tremendously helpful. Because when you're a couple on your own, you think you're being blamed by the therapist, which is, of course, you're not. The therapist is, doesn't blame anyone, but you think they are. Uh, but in the group, it's much more, oh, we're all experiencing this together, we're all going through. There are about 16 people in the seminar, so there was lots of variety, lots of people who were very unhappy, but through the day, the, the divorce counsellors, the divorce professionals, really took us through our emotions and brought us to the other side, I thought. Seek out professional help. Seek out guidance. Seek out groups. And if at all possible, go together. If it's not possible, go by yourself. In the end, I did have a peaceful re re uh, divorce. It was amicable, even though leading up to it was the antithesis or circumvention of amicability. <laughs> when the divorce actually came through, um, I was at work and she came round to my office and I, I heard at the front, oh, Nigel, Anne's here to see you. And she came in the door and she said, the divorce has gone through and I just wanted to thank you. So I think that, that actually helped us get to that point. Oh, I love that, that story. Thank you so much, Nigel. That's another person I pinned down in a corner and asked them to share their story. If you have a story that you'd like to share, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be uh, wonderful and positive, but it's got to be useful. So if you've got something useful to share, please, please uh, get in touch with Susie, S-U-Z-Y, at startingovershow.com. And I just want to, I just have a couple of, thank you for the people who have sent some comments in. Um, one person unknown, it says from Facebook, has pointed out, yeah, the, the shock of divorce and how really, really important it is to communicate uh, to, as prior to even sending in your divorce papers, but getting that communication going. And I think that's very true. The more that you can communicate, um, possibly using a mediator, uh, because you probably do need a little bit of help at that point, that's going to help you uh, help you deal with the whole processing of what's happening to you. Uh, someone else who's uh, apparently I look like Robin Williams in Mrs. Doubtfire, but okay, whatever, if that's what you like. So we're now going to move on to the uh, workshop and other useful areas that I want you to get your phones ready. Don't worry if you don't do it fast enough uh, because you can always rewind these. You can see this on YouTube, on the Facebook page and the Best Way to Divorce Facebook group and also on the website. Uh, if you go to uh, divorcetvshow.co.uk, uh, sorry, divorcetvshow.com, you can also watch the show there and you'll be able to have another look at these. So but I'm going to whip through now and just tell you what they are. But if you have got your phones at the ready, this is the Divorce Financial Workshop, uh, literally about any day now going to start having um, uh, putting one together for covering sort of north and north of England and London I'm also looking to do another one in South East L would love to run some of these in the States as well but if you use this QR code it means you can register and you will be able to find out when the next one is then we have Families Need Fathers. Um, I'd like to just keep this one a little bit longer. This is a great resource for dads as we were talking a lot about dads today. And they have a, a free helpline and all kinds of great resources. A lot of mums also use them if you're self-representing in court in the UK. They're a national UK charity. And hopefully uh, next week I might get some, I was gonna ask Robert if he could recommend some of the dads charities in, uh, in the US that I can give you a link to. And speaking of, of Robert Aguilar Jr., we have the official Disney Dad QR code. So if you use that QR code, it just saves you typing in a long URL and you can whiz over and register for his podcast. 
You may remember Debbie came on recently. She's, I know she's still got an offer of free uh, theta healing videos using the Stanford technique, which is her way she's, her version of using theta healing. Um, but it's a great offer because normally you have to pay for those. So definitely use that QR code and get some healing there. Susan was on recently doing EFT tapping and she's got a free download, which you can access with this one. And I'm still keeping it open for a little while. If you go to the Divorce Masterclass, you can access the entire first section, um, which is about preparing for the journey for uh, nothing. You don't have to to, uh, to pay or put your credit card details in. You can literally just register and see it all in the preview. So if you sp particularly if you're in the early stages, I would grab that while you can, because obviously I'm not gonna leave that free forever. now we come to our healing session so get yourself ready i'm going to bring in marion now dr marion bevington and she's going to give a little bit of an intro about what she does you may may or may not have caught the interview with her i did with her yesterday and we're going to end the show and uh, using this amazing healing that she's going to tell us all about hmm. hello susie can you hear me okay yes i can welcome marion welcome thank you thank you it seems like only yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so really interesting, the stuff that we've been talking about or that's been happening tonight in the shows, um, there's some, it's like there's three areas that I feel are really important. So the first one is the, and they're all S's, you know, we like an alliteration. The first S is actually about showing up. Um, and how do you show up? And as a parent in a family with divorce, obviously the showing up is now gonna be impacted by shocks. So that's another S. So the shock of what's happening and the shock of the unknown or the disturbance, that then leads us to sabotaging behaviors, the other S. So once we've had a shock and we find the sabotaging um, habits that we develop or coping strategies that we take on, how do we then bring ourselves back to a position where we can show up again? Because it's not that we should be the best parents for our kids. We're, we are the only parents our children have. And so whatever we do, they're going to take it on. Um, and so without taking that on as a massive weight on your shoulders, because obviously that can you know, feel really heavy. It's the truth. It's the truth of how it is. So everything good that you do, everything positive that you do, they take it on. And everything negative that you do, they take it on. So just understanding that you are the role model and that's the showing up is you know is is crucial it's absolutely crucial however you show up that's what will the children will receive um and so the process that i'm going to take you all through tonight is a med it's a meditation but it's a very active meditation with the mind not active with the body but active with the mind and what this meditation helps to do is it helps us to be in the place where we show up as our best so where we're closest to our sensible adult responsible self and then also from that place, can we see the parts of us that are sabotaging, the victim parts, the hurt parts, the, what did uh, Robert say, the ego or the, the substance abuser or the angry one or the personal demons. So we can see those as like the opposite end of the scale. So there's this showing up and being the best we can be. And then there's the sabotage. And so a, the ability to take us to take ourselves into showing up for the, as the best we can be, that's the process that I'm going to bring you through and what this actually does is it helps to calm the nervous system um, because when the nervous system is over over activated then our behaviors become over overly intense but when it's under activated we can go into freeze and depression as well so we really need to keep this stable middle ground for the nervous system and that's what this process helps us to do helps us to realign with that middle ground so are you ready <laughs> all right so when you're ready if you want to close your eyes then you can and if that's not okay for you then it's fine for you to just keep watching but as you're with me now and as you can hear my voice i want you to begin to notice you as a being so f can you notice the weight of your body in the seat so this physical being that you are noticing the weight in the seat and as you notice that seat is there under you and it's completely supporting you. So can you allow even more of your body and weight and attention to drop in? 
to the seat. So just allow this complete support to do its job, to completely support you. And then notice what supports us as well is gravity. It's like we're being held, being nurtured by gravity around us and then being supported completely by the ground beneath us. So just allow yourself to connect into that part of yourself that is aware that you're here sitting, resting down in the seat and that we're held by gravity. So supported by the seat and held by gravity and begin to connect to a sense of trust. The ground will never stop supporting us and gravity will never stop holding us. So we can trust these processes. And in that place of trust, I want you to begin to access a place in your body, a physical location in your body where you can sense that trust and where it feels really comfortable. So can you notice just one part of your body that feels really comfortable? And when I say comfortable, I mean it's alive. So it's not like it's dead and it's out of your attention or it's limited in its sensation. Find a part of your body that's comfortable, is very alive, it's full of life full of juicy life. We talked about this yesterday. So can you connect to that now? That life energy, that aliveness and a place of real comfort in your body. And as you're connecting to this, I want you to notice the size of this place, the comfort, the size of that place that's comfortable and the shape of it. So can you find the boundaries of this place that's comfortable? So, for example, if it was the tip of your finger, how far down your finger does it come? If it was your ear, how far into your head does it go? If it was your arm, is it the whole arm? If it's your belly, is it the front or the back? So really identify the location of this comfortable place and the boundaries. And notice the boundary now pay attention to the boundary does it have a substance is it like a solid a liquid or a gas becoming aware of the boundary and what's inside that shape of the boundary that's comfortable and safe and from here if you hold your attention here in this safe comfortable place where there's trust where there's energy where there's life and you're safe and comfortable in this place If you then notice a part of you that feels wounded or a part of you that feels stressed or a part of you that feels the victim or angry maybe, but come back to the place that's comfortable and look from this perspective. So it's as if you can see the place where the the victim is or where the anger is and stay connected to this place of comfort and life and trust and just notice the place where there's pain or stress or wounding or anger and as you're noticing that other part from the place of comfort and centeredness how does that other part appear does it appear very big Does it appear very far away or is it close? Is it small? How does it appear? So just noticing the appearance of that part of you that's either angry or hurt or wounded. Just noticing, staying back in this place of comfort, centered, aliveness and trust. If there was one thing, one ingredient you could take or deliver to the part that's got pain, hurt or stress? What would that one thing be that you could deliver to that other part? And just allow your imagination now to take it to that other part. What is the, what is the, just one thing that you could give, one gift, one thing that's needed, one item, one idea, one emotion, one action. What would that one thing be? And deliver that, allow your imagination to deliver that to the part of you that's there, that's hurt, that's pain, that's stressed, that's angry. 
And as it recedes what you've delivered, just begin noticing how it's received. What happens now? Does it change anything about the way you're feeling? Does it change what you're seeing? Does it change what you're imagining? And then just come back into this place of comfort and allow the trust that is here to trust whatever the process just was. And if you're feeling that there's so little happening that you're a bit concerned you didn't do it right, it's okay. Whatever you did, however much of these instructions you followed is enough for you for today. And this is going to be recorded so you can listen to this process again at any time. Okay, so just feeling the weight of your bum on the seat again. Wiggle your toes and wriggle your fingers. Take a slow breath in, slow, slow, slow breath in. And when you've finished breathing in, open your eyes before you exhale. Thank you. That was very <laughs> calming. <laughs> I have to be careful I don't float off somewhere in these healing sessions. <laughs> that was lovely, Marion. Thank you. And as she said, um, you, you can always rerun this. Um, and uh, often it's, it's true to say, isn't it, that you, by practicing these meditations, you get the uh, increased benefit. Isn't that right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the, because that's why I said at the very end as well, you know, if you feel like nothing's happened, I trust now that that's okay. When I first started meditating, I had no idea what I was doing. And I, I had a thought, well, if I'm just making it up in my head, how can it be of any value? But actually what I now know is that our imagination keeps us fearful and it can keep us happy. So, well, you know, why wouldn't we use it to choose what we do want? That's lovely. Thank you so much, Marion. I'll speak well. to you soon. Bye. 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 So with that calm, calm finish, just to end with inviting you to to come to the next event uh, which we're going to run on friday uh following next week yeah every friday we're going to have these divorce shows and if you have anything you want to contribute just uh, let me know and and the final thought as always is in the war of divorce always make sure that you use peace as your weapon of choice Good night.